Okay, it's time for a zombie podcast. Here we go. It's a zombie podcast. Why do I see your face, Bottles? Yeah, you're not supposed to see my face. Hold on, let me turn it off. Yeah, turn your face off. Yeah, I like the still picture of your face. Yeah, I'm so sexy. Hold on, let's get the nerd on. Honestly, yeah, get the nerd, nerd on. on. It's time I for a zombie get podcast. Nerds, and I'm a nerd myself. Let's uh, let's get to our zombie hypothetical. This is going to be interesting. Yeah, yeah. This guy, I can't believe he's such a nerd and he loves to argue. Hold on. That is the <laughs> definition of nerd. <laughs> nerd and nerd. Actually, I'm a nerd and I love to argue. Nerd and nerd. It's nerd zombie nerd. podcast, nerd. Apocalypse nerd. Hour. Welcome. Nerd. Welcome to the podcast, Boggles nerd. and G Zyga. Nerd one and nerd two. Nerd one and nerd two. Zyg, so, wake up. Yes. Let's get to our, let's get right into it. We're, we're, we're having a zombie hypothetical here to answer a social interaction question. Bring it. The zombie thing was just an analogy. Right. It's let's, let's talk about the foul. I want to talk about the fallacy of the analogy. All right, go ahead. We need to understand the analogy. So we're just going to start from scratch. Let's start over. All right. Well, I'll explain it. Okay. I'm just saying that basically I think martial arts are important because yeah, in, in principle, ideally you want to cooperate. You want to use social skills to smooth things over to make a, harmonious social situation right but some people don't have social skills right and you're not going to be exposed to them in advance and maybe they could come into your life suddenly with no warning and be immediately a threat to your life right okay case, you don't have time to use social skills right so you're saying let's like, kill you immediately well you know what i think he's talking about like dangerous situations right but in that case it would be it, martial arts would be silly because if somebody else on the other side would think the same thing about you, you might be a dangerous, threatening person, etc. So well, to be I'm a dangerous, threatening person, if I'm in my house or on yeah, but house. they don't know that. They don't know that. But I'm not. Inv- I'm talking about like invading people, invading either my property or like. Uh, so you're talking about wartime. So you're talking about there's a wartime setting, like um, you know, where if somebody is invading, you know, if you put a sign up that says "Don't invade," and they are reading, they can read that, but they choose to ignore it and just invade. Your house? Well, that's one scenario. Or uh, like a, a looter coming in my house or a thief. Right, okay. He's armed. Right. Yeah, okay. So that's another situation. Okay. Or so social chaos. Anybody, <laughs> trying, yeah, anybody trying to harm you, okay? So in present yeah. society, somebody coming up to harm you. What you're yeah. not understanding is that why, you're not answering the question of this person, why is he harming you, number one. And number two, you're also not seeing the bigger picture that if you – again, if you're training for martial arts training, if this is a mm-hmm. smart looter – a uh, rioter, serial killer, dangerous person, whatever, what have you, right. they they don't care about your martial arts. They're just going to have a weapon, a gun, a bat, a knife, something to counteract your martial arts training. So in that case, you would be best served to learn gun training. And then in that case, you would be best served <laughs> to learn te- to have technological advancements like planning a gun turn outside your house. A- again, mm-hmm. there is you're, you're creating no you're, – you're not understanding that this – if you have no limit on your – on your what what type of preparation you're doing or what type of investment you're putting into martial arts training, again, it's no different than preparing a gun culture where uh, we just have better, bigger, faster guns. And again, what stop? Why stop there? Why not armaments? Why not preparation from bullets? You know, they could attack us from a greater distance, right? If they're more sophisticated thieves. Well, I am training in gun training. Oh, well, that's my point. So if <laughs> so, if your energy is going away from socializing to prevent the problem. It's always going into pound of cure, and that's what you're not realizing. This is a pound of cure mentality. And for every ounce of prevention, which is more difficult to procure, the uh, let me use a different word, more difficult to uh, to train for to obtain the ounce of the pound of cure is a much greater is a much greater entity. So I, I say, what you're saying. so. Like, uh, for every I, I, the way you're saying it, it's like if I'm going around starting fights or like being no, violent. I'm not saying starting I'm, fights. I'm, I'm saying if you're fight. reactionary, not starting fights. You're on your farm, remember? They're attacking you. Yeah. Right. So, to what degree are you preparing? Is you're saying if you're going to be trained to to you know to beat a man up, that's a lot of preparation. So, yeah. it, like by the same token, isn't this guy just going to get a gun? So don't you have to up the preparation? I mean, if you're if you're addressing pound of cure, you're always much more involved. And wasting much more energy than an ounce of prevention. The ounce of prevention takes more training to – just like you're, you're complaining about the time of training. Like this guy is just right outside your door about to attack you, but taking – learning social skills takes so much longer. But you don't understand in the long run, it prevents 10 robbers from being out there with guns versus one robber you have to deal with. In the long term, I, I agree with you 100% in terms of long-term strategy. Of course, it makes sense. Cooperation, socializing, that's what's going to make society better, more stable. 
Right, but I'm saying if you seriously are considering, if you seriously are considering defending your property versus like, say, for instance, cooperatively having 10 people in your society or your, let's say you have a town, right? And mm-hmm. you're, the town in the town, you're not the only one worried about people breaking in your house. Aren't, aren't all the people worried about breaking, people breaking in, random people breaking into their house? Everyone's worried about that. Right. So, well, except the people doing the breaking in. Yes. They're in the minority. So wouldn't it serve you, instead of learning martial arts training, which depends on you individually, which is, again, the problem, individual effort, wouldn't it serve you better to learn social skills? Then you have a cooperative, like a neighborhood watch or a cooperative town strategy versus you training to, to beat this one guy up. Aren't, isn't, again, come down to numbers again, like you as a society who is more worried about the minority of looters, like the, the majority of society isn't a, a – we're not in Mad Max times where we have – have to worry about looters left and right so aren't the majority <laughs> yeah, of people trying to prevent that so when you make so you make it sound if, like if no one knows martial arts then you, no matter how many people you put together well let's say we have bruce lee who is like years and years and years of training versus three people who have no training just three strong guys yeah no training no martial arts training whatsoever but they're just strong guys they're just you know corn fed whatever <laughs> corn fed. let's say they're they just, uh, they just, you know, are working on the farm all day. Yeah, yeah. Who would you bet on? Would you bet on Bruce Lee with all his training or three guys? I'd bet on Bruce Lee. I would bet on Bruce Lee too. Let's take five guys. No training versus Bruce Lee. Who would you bet on? Mm. I, I guess Absolutely no training. Maybe, Absolutely no training. Maybe 10, 10 guys, 20 guys, then I would bet on yeah. 20 guys. No, I'd bet on five guys against Bruce Lee with all his years of training. Do you see how just those five guys negate all that training? Those years and years of of pound of cure prevention, just like hmm. all of Bruce Lee's training. Who would you bet on? Bogler with a gun, no gun training. Just hmm. gave him a gun today versus yeah. Bruce Lee with ten years of training. Who would you bet on? <laughs> with no gun training, you're pretty likely to just blow your own head off. So. Or you might uh, shoot him. A day, of, a day of gun training. No gun training. Bogler, no gun training, and Bruce Lee with all his martial arts training. Who would you bet on? I put I put him at twenty yards apart, and Bruce Lee's trying to break into his house or something. Who do you bet on? A hundred yards. Uh, he might figure I, out I guess what? I would still bet on Bogler with a gun. Really? Because if I have to defend my life, I'll fucking shoot that motherfucker. Yeah, but you have no training. You so you have to figure out how to use the gun. Safety? Yeah. He, would, he, he basically has to figure out within the 20 yards, Bruce yeah. Lee comes to him to figure out how to push the safety. And once he but figures he out that, that guy's gone. yeah, he's gone. So again, you're talking about all this training and preparation when you don't realize how easily that's defeated. Like I said, it just comes down it, this pound of cure mentality will never defeat the social element like i said if you have one guy with a gun versus 20 people without guns who would you take well that guy with a gun might shoot two or three people three or four people but the other people are going to get him eventually so again so to to say that hey we need more martial arts training in the meantime or this or that you're discounting the, the the reality of the situation which is the social element which always defeats everything i mean put it this way I'm a strong guy, and I, I wouldn't be f- afraid of fighting any chick on the face of the planet right now. But if yeah. there were like a hundred <laughs> chicks, and they, I, they, you put me in a ring with a hundred chicks, even though I could probably start punching a lot of them, I, I'm sure uh, somebody would hit me in the back, or the back of the head, or somebody who has no strength, but they could just hang on my leg, and I'd be hammered and be taken out, not by not by their skill, but by their sheer numbers. Hmm. It's true. Actually, now that I think about it, it would make more sense for him to have 10 buddies who, who can look out for him. That's my than... point. So if he learns how to socialize with his community versus how we have nowadays where nobody knows their neighbor, right? <laughs> yeah. Most, most you know, communities today, it's, you know, it used to be where you knew who, who all your neighbors were in yes, your immediate yes. vicinity. Now it's like you could go by with 10, 10 years without saying hi to your neighbor. But so then... there's no, so, no social element. So, of course, everybody has to have, you know, Zyger's mentality where yeah, what if this person breaks strangers. in? Yes, a society of strangers, exactly. So there are no strangers. There's only people with bad social skills. And social skills, what you're not realizing, are compounded by your mentality. If you, as a person, have really good social skills, you're going to socialize with all your neighbors in your immediate vicinity. So let's say you have like 10 neighbors. You're affecting 10 people. Now, those 10 people affect the people around them and so on. But by the same token, if you have a view that, hey, these are all 10 strangers around me, I need better martial arts training. I need better gun training. What do you think their view is going to be? Their view is going to be the same thing. So you're only perpetuating the problem by saying, well, we need a train to beat up strangers or train to beat up looters that come onto my property. It's the same mentality that's going to spread to them. That's exactly the mentality we have today. Everybody's very adversarial. But at the same time, it's ironic because everybody's trying to still meet their social need, which is 
to socialize, and they're trying to socialize with strangers who they've demonized. No, I understand what you're talking about now. Yeah, I, I get your arguments. It's like saying, uh, it's like saying, um, you know, like people always want to be buddies. They always want to socialize with new people, but now Facebook has taken over because there's there's no social skills involved with Facebook. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you can be so socialized. Social you could, yeah, you could be having fun with all the neighbors around your your immediate vicinity. You could be having much more fun and getting your social needs met it's, instead of having five hundred friends who you have no idea who they are on Facebook, and that's your social element. You know, posting on their wall and sending messages to each other, uh, each okay, other electronically. Please. That is not even as satisfying, nowhere near as satisfying as talking to two people face to face or hanging out with two people face to face. But yet, that's the culture people have created. Mm -hmm. That doesn't seem strange. Well, I don't think it seems strange if we, we take the perspective that uh, basically those who are in power want us to be more isolated because it makes us weaker. They don't uh, – no, they don't want us to be – like the government doesn't want us to be isolated. They're always sending out community PSAs to, you know, take care of your kids, um, you know, education first. You know, t you know, it's always like a, a community mentality, but by the same token – but he's referring to someone else as people in power. They're like, who are you, who are you talking about when people, you're talking about people in power? Well, That's the only people I think in power are the ultimate people in power. Corporations. I think of the government. don't want us to be too stirring up the, the shit, you know, stirring up the pot. That has nothing to do with it. If you're a corporation, you're out to make money. Yeah. Yeah, but the, and, nobody is openly – corporations aren't, don't have a, a corporate strategy to go, let's separate the people. Let's, let's, you know, let's pit the people against each other. Mama, I'm sure somebody wants feminism out there. I'm sure people out there. Yeah, but want even feminists don't have the goal of let's put society against each other. They're they're feminists have good intentions. They're like we want equality, but they're just like Zyger. They don't understand that their good intentions are no substitute for a, a competent execution or having a, a rel, you know a a competent strategy. Like for instance, they're saying, well, there should be a quality of treatment. Like women should be treated equally as men. They don't realize that's like saying kids should be equally treated as adults. There was good intentions behind that. The outcome, yes, will lead to disaster, yeah, but there's good but, intentions you know, behind that. They're not saying some people, they're not saying they were that. Funded look, by people, by yeah, they're fun, yeah. people who funded them understood what was going on. Yeah. They didn't understand what was going on. Why would they? If they were under, if they understood what was going on, that is the last thing they would do because they would realize that when you affect other people, that affects you. It doesn't just affect the other people. Well, like if I steal from you, <laughs> if I steal from you in the short term, that benefits me, but ultimately that creates a you know, a resentful mentality where you become like now my enemy. So I'm creating enemies in the world that will eventually come back to kill me or hurt me. So if I, if I understood what was going on, there's no way I would fund something that would that would create more enemies for me. A limited vision. So somebody was short -sighted. That's my point. It, it's, it's a limited like, vision. Uh, it's, a, it's a good like, intention. Well, don't you look at you. You are the you are the epitome of good intentions of short sighted good intentions. Your intention is to live a good life, but to kill anybody that troubles you and to beat people up that bother you that is good intentions bad judgment because you don't realize your whole view is dysfunctional to say that you are gonna war against these people these strangers who you don't know what i mean when you're talking about socializing everybody's a stranger to you you're trying to meet strangers but by the same token you're trying to kill them so that it's totally anti your, your purposes are contradictory to one another on one hand you're you're training to say Everybody's a potential enemy. Everybody p could potentially come to my property and kill me. But yet, these people that could p potentially be my enemies, I'm going to make the decision to learn how to socialize with them and make my life better through them. That makes no sense. Um, I don't know. In, in some sense, I can empathize with them. Like, say I go to a nightclub or something. There's all these guys who are retarded and stuff. And I, I would feel the same things. Either. Like, I better know something. Yeah, but look at Why is that culture in place in the first place? Because you're there. Huh? That nightclub is not... Is not See, you, in your mind, this is what you guys don't understand as short-sighted social people. You think that the nightclub culture was just always there. That nightclub I'm, I'm became... I'm definitely not thinking about nightclub. No, but it's whatever whatever about. social situation, the looter situation, where you're thinking about guys robbing you, that yeah. that social situation is not a given. That is affected by you. By what you do, that affects how the people react to you eventually. You, in your mind, it's always been there or it's just like this... This thing that just is, is kind of like a given. It's just like when, okay, when you have a movie, a feminist movie, and there's a, it's a romantic comedy. And who are they centering on this romantic comedy in romantic comedies? Centering on chicks. Chicks, right? Yeah. Okay. So there's a chick and she's going to fall in love with a guy eventually, right? Yeah. Right. Along the way, there's all kinds of dorks and losers, right? Yeah. yeah. Are these, are these dorks and losers, do they represent real people? Now you see dorks and losers. Do they represent real people? 
Well, the, the archetypes are similar to people you would meet every day. Right. So, but so they represent real people. But how are they treated in the movie? They're treated very like, dismissively. Like they're they're treated as just problems. You know, like yeah, creepy so, guy, the loser, the psychopath, yeah, yeah. the serial killer, etc. Right. Yes. They're all treated as as like props, as furniture. Yeah. Okay. Now, when those real life persons, people are uh, are are the recipient of that treatment, you know. This kind of instills in girls that guys are guys are not real people. You guys are just archetypes. Like when I interact with you, if you're a loser or a dork, mm -hmm. I can slight you in the movie because it's funny and you get over it in the movie. But in real life, when you get slighted, you get hurt. You go back, you become resentful, and you plan to kill hookers later in life. Mm -hmm. They don't realize <laughs> girls don't realize that though. They think you're just a little movie character and you don't have any feelings. And if they treat you like furniture, nothing's gonna come back to nothing's gonna come back to them. There's yeah, no consequences. Yeah. They don't realize I would want to smash their face. And right. Off. Because because you're portrayed as a, as just a prop. So in Zyger has the same mind. He has a romantic comedy in his mind where he's living a good his life in his house, and everybody else represents the dork, the loser, the looter, the guy who's gonna kill him, the guy who wants to break into his home, the stranger. That's exactly what those nerds and dorks represent to the girl, the stranger. They don't represent people. Yeah, and I mean, I think you like him too. And, you know, yeah, but that's my point. It, the, the club is created by you. The club is not outside of you. That's what you don't realize. You think you're going to a strange environment with loser people. Yeah, you're yeah, like I, a chick. I, you're like going around the world and going, there's dork, lo dorks and losers uh -huh. all around me, and there's that one Prince Charming who represents an actual person. Everybody else is just a prop. Yeah, so you, you, you go to the club. There's dorky uh, Armenian guys. Uh, there's losers and enemies at the uh, club, and you just go there, and you're the special person in the club. No, yes, yes. you're everybody in the club. Uh, yes, sir, Zyga. Yes, I, I said, I understand what you're saying. Let, let me ask you this. Okay. Do you think it's possible that, like, let's say me, I, I could do everything right. Okay. Like, I don't fight with anybody. I socialize 100%. It's like textbook for my entire life. Doing everything it's right doesn't mean not fighting everybody. Because somebody, like I said, they might attack you. Right. So you, you, say, you still admit that even if I do everything right, I still might get attacked. It's possible. Didn't we just cover that? What if I said, what if we said... Okay, you might get attacked, right? So you better train. Okay, now you train for 10 years, you're Bruce Lee. Now, five untrained guys attack you. How well was that? How, how, how well, how well was your, how effective was your training? Your 10 years of training versus these five untrained guys? It's basically a question of efficiency. Okay, so then you buy a gun. So you buy a gun. Again, we're back to the same issue, which you're not realizing. It's a pound of cure. You're putting in a pound of cure. You haven't realized that. You have to you have to train martial arts to beat up any single individual. Now they've got guns. You got to get a better gun. So now you have to armor your house. So now you have to get nuclear weapons. So now you have to get you know booby traps around your house. You have to get spike strips. You have to you know etc. Yeah, but even if even if you avoid all the martial arts training, if you just live your life socially, you try to make all the connections. It could still happen. That you yeah, would, uh, because you're a socially that. incompetent guy. Of course, it always happens to a socially incompetent guy. That's your view. It's the same. To, it's like saying to a chick, okay. You know what? Like, what I should. It's, it's like saying to a chick, look it. To get it Watch. It's like saying to a chick. No, it's like saying to a chick, look. You know those nerds and dorks you you just slight with your comments? They have feelings too. What do you think she's going to say? Oh, I'm going to change my ways. No, she's a socially incompetent chick. She's going to go, yeah, I'll try to be nicer to them. But what she's going to do right when you when you leave? She's going to turn around and do the exact same thing because her view is social incompetence. Her view is centered on herself. She doesn't have a social view. That's why she's socially incompetent to begin with. She's like saying this. You're like saying this. You're the doctor. You come in, you know, and you say, you know what you need to do? You need to take care of your hands and feet because your hands pick up things and your feet carry you places to go, you know, to to travel to places. So just because they're not as important as your head doesn't mean you shouldn't take care of them. She says, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And then she goes over and, uh, you know, I don't know, cuts her hand or feet off because she doesn't need them. She, she just feeds her her face because her face is the important part, the part she sees. She she sees she sees her mouth open, and she knows that her taste buds like the taste of food. So she, all she cares about is eating the food. So she doesn't take care of her hands or feet. Eventually, she can't go anywhere. She can't do anything because she's all she's focused on her head. But you don't realize when you're socializing, the people around you are like your arms and your feet. They're attached to your body. They affect you. They're not separate from you. If your view is that they're separate from you, you are chopping off. You are essentially chopping off your arms and your hands. So now, yes, your mouth may be enjoying the food, but now you can't pick up anything or you can't go anywhere because you have no arms and no legs. The same token, you may be defending yourself, and if somebody tries to loot you and you're defending your property, you've learned martial arts, but now you've created a hostile social environment, which makes it that much harder for you to even meet your social need of socializing and talking to so-called strangers. So what you're saying is that no matter how much martial arts training you have, 
appropriate socialization is always going to be a better defense. Yes. Against any what I'm essentially yeah, saying, I'm saying is the tiny, the tiny, the tiny ounce of tiny prevention, ounce prevention is always worth more than the pound of cure. Always. That is a principle. Uh, see, for us, like, we have no model. Like, it's hard That's my to- point. It's not, it doesn't have, like, you don't instantly change just because I tell you something. Yeah. There has to be real experience. And then you go, aha. That's why I realize it and you don't. It's not yeah. just me telling you because in your view, if you don't have social skills, obviously somebody's going to say something to you and you don't know how to manage their actions. They're going to give you a bad reaction. You're going to have a bad feeling towards them and there's going to be a social impediment. There's no good relationship formed. So what are you going to do in the meantime? Well, in the meantime, it's like, it's like saying this. I tell you, look, you shouldn't sit on that bench because you'll get splinters. But you're so dumb, you just keep forgetting you keep sitting on the bench. That doesn't mean you're not going to get splinters. You're still going to have to deal with splinters. So now you have to waste money going to the Band-Aid store, buying tweezers, you know, buying cream to soothe the wounds, and pulling and wasting time pulling out splinters because you're socially incompetent. It's a sa- Well, not socially incompetent for the analogy, but because you have a bad memory, you keep sitting on the bench I told you not to sit on. So you, by necessity, have to kind of, to a certain extent, deal with cure. So let's say Zyger, because he's antisocial, and he doesn't make his neighbors feel secure, and eventually one of them loses their job, and because there's no relationship with Zyger, eventually he goes, well, I don't know, that guy. I'm gonna take it. I need to take his food because I need it. I'm gonna die without it. He doesn't realize that's Zyger. It's just a, it's just a prop in his life, a stranger. So because of Zyger's poor social skills, now Zyger has to learn martial arts and buy a gun and defend his house and buy an alarm system. So to a certain extent, yes, he does have to worry more about a pound of cure than I do because I realize in the long run, well, all that would be defeated if I got to know my neighbors, and then even if they're in dire straits. They, I wouldn't consider them a separate entity from me. Like if they're, if that guy lost his job, well, he could, couldn't he come to me and the other people in, in his social circle because aren't, don't we have a relationship now? So aren't we supporting him? We're not just supporting ourselves. We're supporting the social circle we've created. Don't you have like friends and family that you depend on and they, they give you money, they give you resources, they give you things? Mm-hmm. Right. So essentially yeah. you're widening, widening your family. Yeah. So you're having more resources now. I mean, don't you come here to the, for the forum for resources? Weren't you a stranger? Did you always know me? No. No. Don't I, aren't I getting money from you? Mm-hmm. So haven't we formed a relationship where we're sharing resources right now? Mm-hmm. But formerly, but formerly we were strangers. We would have been competing for resources. Do you see the difference? Formerly we were yes. competing for yes. money. Now we're sharing resources and money. Mm-hmm. This is the larger view of social interaction. See, I'm giving you something. You're giving me something. There's a mutual arrangement here, and it's benefiting everybody. And now we want it to grow. So now we we have. Like if you had a problem, it would no longer be Bogler versus 10 strangers on the forum. It would be Bogler with his bros to help him out, to help fix the problem. You have more resources to fix the problem. So you have more prevention for that problem from even uh, overcoming you. Versus if Zyger is a stranger not on the forum, well, now he's our enemy. He's a competitor against us. So how is he going to do with all his training, but still we have like 20 guys with resources? We're always going to beat him every time. That is the larger view of social interaction. Yes, he has with all his martial arts training and all his guns and all <laughs> all the armor 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 plated siding he just installed on his house. He has no hope against us ten untrained people. Just yeah. like Bruce Lee with all his training has no hope against five strong guys because he can't watch the back of his head at all times. Mm-hmm. It takes yeah. no training to just grab a guy's leg. It takes no training to just hit a guy in the back of the head. No, that's true. No, I guess you you've made me reconsider some things. Yeah, and now see, my social competence has affected you, and in turn, you will affect others. That's how it works. Yeah. You see, the more socially competent you are, the greater effect you have on other people around you in your social circle. You become the shaper. I don't let your delusional view, your dysfunctional view shape me and go, oh, I need to start training more. I need to buy more martial arts equipment, buy more guns, get more armor plating for my house. I go, no, that's stupid. That's silly. This is what you need to do. I shape your view, not letting you shape my view. You become the shaper. That's when you become competent. When you realize, oh, my expectations are more functional than yours, my expectations are therefore more valuable than yours, I need to get you on the same page. Because if our expectations aren't mutual in nature, then they're antithetical by definition. That means they're opposed. Our expectations will either mutually meet our needs, like you'll meet my needs and I'll meet your needs, or nobody's needs will be met eventually. But uh, for these, that subject specifically, like you say that it's impossible for two people to have uh, functional needs that are competing. Right. Because right. needs are universal. So there would never be a need where, like, I would get something at the cost of you, uh, at the cost of your need. I, I always argue with Book about this. Okay. Like, uh, we talk about uh, 
again, like limited resources, people competing like two people. Well, like I said, you got to look at it as like a family. Okay, let's say there's limited resources in your family for whatever reason. You lost your job. Now, now that you have you have a family of a wife and two kids, right? So do right. you just go, well, survival of the fittest, I'm the fitter person in the household. So it goes, the daughter gets less food first, then she gets no food, then the son, then the wife, then me. Is that how it goes? <laughs> Yeah. No, I guess that doesn't make sense. But Well, that's then, essentially what you're saying, so, though. You're saying, that's, it, with a society, you're saying the son, whoever represents the son, whatever group represents the son, or the daughter, the weakest part, then the son, then the wife, then you. If there's no relationship, you are essentially saying survival of the fittest. That is my but, point. So that view, of course, that view precludes any kind of... Uh, so survival, survival of the fittest, that survival of the fittest, yes, survival of the fittest is a socially incompetent view. It's no different than, like, nationalism. That's an incompetent view. It just means that you don't understand that those people, like the borders. When we say we're America and they're and they're Mexico, what's dividing us? The border. Well, no. What is the border, though? Well, people with guns and a wall. No. What is the border? The guns and wall are there to bring give the illusion of the border. But what is the border really? The separation well, between uh, men from uh, different areas. No. What is the well, border? It's a border that we're putting up with, against other people. Like, hmm, what's the border? No. The border can move depending on weather conditions, depending on arrangements, agreements. What's the border? It's the agreement that we have so far with the other party. Yeah. Can the border move a foot tomorrow to yes. the left or right? Yes. So is it really a border? It's an agreement. Yeah, it's just an agreement. It's just I say the border's here. Tomorrow I can say the border's there, and I go, if you go, yeah, the border's there, well, then the border's there. So what is the border really? Is it really a border? Is there really a border between Mexico and America? No, I mean, no, there's the same. The same border is in is in Zyger's mind right now between him and the stranger in his house. Hold on, someone's knocking on my door. <laughs> <laughs> the, the border, the border between is the, is the same border that is are the are the uh, walls that make up Zyger's house right now. That is a border. Can he build an extension on his house and extend his border? Yes. Yes. Can he invite people into his house? Yes. So he's just removed the border. Uh, yeah. So the border is all agreement. The only separation is just by agreement. Yeah, I mean, in Zyger's case, it makes sense. The, uh, yeah, but uh, in a country's case, uh, yeah. Uh, it's the same thing. A country is just an immature person. It's the same. It's the exact same thing. So in your view, there, there shouldn't be countries. It should be all a big... No, because look at what is a country? I, again, I told you, what is a country? It's an arbitrary line in the sand. Well, yeah, because, I mean, technically the world is everybody's. I mean, yeah, I mean, if you're, if you're standing in a room full of Mexicans and a room full of Chinese... Germans, Asians, Americans, etc. Will you know who's from what country? Will you know where the border is? If they're all in the same room? Oh no, it's just people. Right, but there's all different nationalities. You're yeah, separated well, by your by your nationality, by your legal no, citizenship. Separated the groups, of course. Yeah, like naturally by culture, by by nation. There you go. Exactly. They're going to separate by delusional mentality. <laughs> but if they're socially competent, they're going to realize they're going to realize, oh, there's a room full of people. We're a social group, depending on if we agree or not. That's really all it is. It's a social agreement. It's you either agree to be competent or you're incompetent and learning and trying to agree. Do you realize? Do you realize that the nations is for one group that's like functional to subvert every other group ultimately. So it's kind of a there is there is, no, there is no there is no there is no different groups. That's what you have to realize. Ultimately, Why is he viewed as imperialistic. I don't get it. Yeah, because he's saying that a group is conquering a group. It's like yeah, saying I don't get this not conquering, but using even social confidence. If one look, person has a functional view and he's converting other people to his view, yeah, but it's being... it's like saying this: your head is converting your chest, <laughs> and then slowly your chest is converting your arms, and eventually your arms are converting your legs, and then eventually they convert your toes and fingers. What's really been converted? Has something been converted, or have you lost your delusional view? What's the difference? You could say that you've lost your delusional view. But yeah, that's what's really happened. Yeah, from the, like from the, culture, again, from the dysfunctional perspective. Hold dear to their delusions. Exactly my point. How did they become, how did they become a, a Mexican? How did they become a, an American? Tell me how they did that. Well, it's a long process. So no, it's not a long process. process. They grew up. That's it. They just well, grew up in the culture. If yeah. I took a Mexican baby with a Mexican citizenship, a natural citizenship, and I secretly took them to America, and they grew up in America, as so-called Americanized, yeah, would they know they were Mexican? <laughs> no, they would think they were American just because I, I shifted their location. I just changed their their uh, the start of their cultural point, their yeah. cultural identity. So th it's really again, it's just a belief. It's not it's not it's not reality. 
to say that you are, you know, different than the Mexican or different than the, you know, than the Chinese guy. It's just silliness. But then, like American uh, identity or uh, Mexican identity, these are it's composed of values and ideas and principles. Yeah, not not like values, ideas, and principles. It's there are all prints. There, everybody is 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 uh, is affected by principles. But then there are the delusions that are added on top, like the cultural ideals. I mean, what do we have as cultural ideals here? They shift all okay. the time. Isn't communism a cultural ideal? Isn't capitalism a cultural okay. ideal? Aren't those things crumbling right now? Of course. So, well, you say, of course, like you, it's a common sense. It's not, of course, to you because you're making the argument just the opposite of that, that it isn't, of course, that it, these things are valid, like these cultural well, identities no, are no, valid. They aren't. have always been crumbling and reconstructing, but it doesn't change the fact that people are holding dear to them. And they're, they're, right. They're but don't people hold – As if it was a part of their body. Right. But don't people hold dear to feminism? Yeah. Okay. So what is – what needs to change? Is it, is it that we need to adjust and adopt feminism because they hold it dear? I'm not, I'm not saying that it's wrong to do this. I'm just saying that – what it is, some way of, of, of seeing it. It's similar to. A I would say I would I would liken it to not seeing it. I would liken it to blindness, to not seeing it. Like feminism to me is blindness, as is any other cultural, you know, identity. That's blindness. That's not seeing it. You have to be blind to to buy into feminism. You have to be blind to buy into the whole mentality of I need to learn martial arts to beat up this guy because he might loot me. Those are the same type of mentalities. Don't women go? I need to. Um, I need to become feminist because I need to stand up for women's rights and make sure men don't take advantage of me. Don't they have the same mentality as you? Yeah, I guess in a, in a certain way. Yeah, but aren't you functionally as a man? Aren't you, isn't your isn't your responsibility to take care of a woman? So why do they have the mentality that you're the enemy and they need to support feminism to maintain their rights? Because they're also, blind. Sure. It's a question of social competence. They don't have social competence. Mm-hmm. Their view isn't functional. That's why they are feminists. They're like, you're not going to take care of me. We're enemies right now. I have to take care of myself. I need my own rights. That means I need to delude myself that uh, women are just as powerful as men, just as smart as men, just as strong and capable as men. So now I've created my own like a religion, feminism, my own my own cultural standard, feminism. So if we follow this logic all the way through, ultimately, in like a, a million years, there should only trillion. be one way of thinking. Eventually, yeah. Let's say if we got to the one place, yeah. We're, we always say that. Isn't there always one way of thinking? It's just like saying... Isn't there one way of eating? Yes, you could eat intravenously with an IV in your arm in a hospital, but that is an abnormal way of eating. That shows you're in an abnormal condition. You got in an accident and you can't eat through the normal way. You could. No, you no, could that's good. I, I like this idea. You could I also. You to say it. <laughs> yes, you could also eat by. Uh, you could eat by bypassing your esophagus and chewing it, and just like mash it into a blender and cut a hole in your stomach and surgically implant the food. You can also eat that way, but again, another dysfunctional way. No, there again, is one way I, of eating. I, I wanted you to say. There should only be one way to think. Well, we already said that in the ebook. thing to say. It is. <laughs> well, we've already said that in the ebook that the, the one way ultimately there's one direction. When you limit, that's why we say direction is the limitation. When when you eliminate all the options, you eventually have the right direction. That is direction to eliminate all the options and to take the one non-optional way. And there is only one non-optional way. That's why we always say there's unlimited degrees of dysfunction and only one degree of function. That means you're not. You, it's always incorrect because we used to say it incorrectly. We used to say you're becoming more functional. That's incorrect. Yeah, one, you either one. become functional or you're becoming less dysfunctional. That's the correct way to say it. It's a beautiful thing. Yes. So it, it's, you know, it's not just lazy semantics to say you're becoming more functional. It's incorrect. It's a misunderstanding of that. There is only function or dysfunction. Holy shit. There should be that, that statement right there in the ebook. Like all cultures should dissolve to, to, uh, Make place for one supreme culture. One supreme culture. Just function. <laughs> I mean, that really is that. Put that there. Really, awesome. I mean, the culture is necessity. That is the real culture. It's like when your needs are getting met, the idea of having a cultural identity becomes irrelevant. I mean, why do you need cultural identity? Because think about it. Why do why do people want to become American or say that America is better? Or why do become, people want to become Spanish and say our Spanish culture is better? We have a better government, better healthcare. Why do they say that? Because ultimately, they're comparing needs. They're saying our needs are met. In the best way, we have more freedom. We have people taking care of us in our health care. We have better jobs, economy, so our, our physical needs are getting met. We have better relationships, etc. What are they ultimately saying? Our needs are getting met. So ulti- the ultimate culture is whoever's needs get met. So really, it's kind of ridiculous to say I'm an American or this, I'm this, I'm that. Really, they're trying to say the best culture you want to belong to is the culture that meets your needs. Hmm. <laughs> 
That seems not so awesome. idealistic. <laughs> it is idealistic. It's but it's essentially it's what. But it's radical. But too. but it's what everybody's working towards. So it's yeah. it's kind of silly <laughs> to say it's even idealistic because <laughs> that's every, what everybody's naturally going for anyway. That's true. <laughs> yeah, but to come right out and say it. It's yeah. funny. It's funny that it's <laughs> radical. It's radical to hear, but that's essentially what everybody is doing. <laughs> so. Well, because they're putting it in a, such a different rhetoric. Well, they're, they don't know. They're, they're, they're doing it to accommodate their dysfunctional cultures. Like they can't just go, America is better than China, because that's that's discounting the dysfunctional view. So they have to say, well, America is different than China. But th- by by doing that, they're reinforcing the dysfunctional view that there is some kind of magic to the culture. Like there's something magical when you become a Chinese person or a or an American person. You get some magical entity that helps you meet your needs more. When really they're both after the same thing. Like China's trying to meet the needs of people. Americans trying to meet the needs of their people. One's doing better than the other. Yes, but to be delusional and to justify that, you have to say, well, the American culture. That's when you're an American, you have to say to your American people, it's better to be an American. Do not do we say it's just as good to be a Ch- Chinese as being an American in America? No, we, no. Don't we always say, oh, we have way more freedoms, we're way better than Chinese people? Yeah. Our culture, well, culture wise. People would just come out and say it, that the point of culture is to meet people's needs. Yeah, but the reason why they can't say it. The reason why they can't say it is they'll look stupid. It's the pride issue because they go – if they say, well, America, it's a, it's stupid to worship American culture, they have to call themselves stupid because that's essentially what they're doing. They're saying, I have pride in America. I am an American. I have all the rights and freedoms that you guys don't have. But really, that's a stupid statement. So if they say that that is a stupid statement, they're really saying I'm stupid. That's why people will never just go out, come out and say, oh, it's, it's lame to be an American. It's lame to be a nationalist. Well, even beyond that, it's that if people start thinking this way, that, you know, the, the the value of a culture is in how much it meets people's needs, then people will start getting really critical about what's going on because they're not going to be, like, patriotic for no reason. Yeah, but eventually... They'll judge the value of America. The funny thing is, eventually nobody cares about the culture. I mean, on, on the surface, people go, well, yeah, I'm I'm glad to be an American, <laughs> but don't we always protest all the things that our, gov- our American government is doing? Yes. Like, don't the people, aren't the people riding now and, you know, in Europe and stuff, aren't they essentially saying, yeah, we're greater, we're, UK is the greatest place on earth, but yet yeah. we're riding against our own government because it's not meeting our needs. So their right. actions tell the truth. Forget, that's why it's irrelevant what people say. Yeah. If they say my culture is better, this culture is better. You just look at their behavior. You see, they don't give a fuck about UK culture. They don't think UK culture is the best. Otherwise they wouldn't well, riot. Some people do that, but others are like uh, critical. They say, oh, you guys shouldn't be complaining. You should it's be not some, right there's a lot of people rioting. You know, when you read in the newspaper lately, there's a lot of riots around the world in different cultures that aren't meeting their needs. And these same cultures are very, I would say the Middle East cultures are super ultra um, nationalist. They're more so than Americans. Right. Like Israelis and Palestinians, whatever. Those types of groups who have the reli- also have the religious element too. They're very adamant about their culture being the top culture. But yet, total conflicts all, all the time, right? Yes. There you go. So their behavior says it all, not what they say about their culture. Who cares what they say about their culture? It's their behavior that matters. Hmm. They protest with their own behavior. If everything That's was so happy, they would be they would be frolicking in Egypt right now. They'd be frolicking in in Israel right now. They'd be dancing. Yeah, they're dancing with mortars right now. Hold on, hold on. They're fi- they're fighting the counterculture, right? Like Palestine is fighting the Israeli culture. I don't, yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a political discussion. That is not the point. We're making they're a point about fighting. cultures. They're not fighting their own culture. <laughs> Thank you. Well, sometimes they are, boss. Uh, okay. Like okay, uh, you like know what? Cultures. You know what? There's no fights against the government in Israel. <laughs> you happy uh, now? I got it, I got it. But it's better to clarify sometimes. You know, some people take a little while to see what you're saying. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. It's good to clarify the examples. I agree. It's good to be accurate. In the case of in case of America, it made sense. In Israel and Palestine, it took me a little bit. Well, it took me a little bit because, in some sense, I'm going by hearsay, so I'm not in those cultures. But just from the experience I've seen and what we see in the newspaper, we have to say, well, if these cultures are so great, there shouldn't be any problems within those within their boundaries. Hmm. Okay. Okay. I mean, if Mexico is the greatest place to be, why are there so many kidnappings there? Why do people want to leave that place? Okay. Yeah. All right, now it makes sense. Sweet. <laughs> I thought this was going to be a, a five-minute podcast. It's a, uh, it's now a forty-seven minute podcast. <laughs> uh, it's, it's an effective podcast. It was a long, it was a long zombie example that that morphed into something more. So once you stop viewing other people as zombies and more as an extended family, 
you will be less antagonistic towards them and try to. It's an analogy. It's yeah, analogy, but it's it's really. Like I said, there's there's got to be the experience because it's it's this is a theory for you right now. Yeah. With yeah. A, with poor social skills, that's what creates the boundaries. The the poor social skills create the boundaries. So let's say you're socializing with, socializing with somebody right now, but your view is that they're my family. I should be looking out for them, taking care of them because they're going to affect me later on down the line, right? Yeah. Huh? But if you don't have the social skills to make that happen, you're always going to get a negative, bad response from them, an enemy response from them. Yeah. So it's going to create that mentality in your mind. It's going to reinforce that they're not your family, that they are an enemy. So there has to be the experience. You have to become socially competent and then realize when you start meeting their needs, then you're getting the positive response all the time. You're realizing, oh, the the real problem was I was socially incompetent. I was creating the boundary. When I became competent, I removed the boundary. Now I have, I'm starting to realize that there are no strangers out there. They're just people I haven't socialized with yet and that they are really an extended family to me. That is really my extended family that I haven't met yet. Whereas when you don't have the social skills, they always become the stranger, the enemy, yeah. the dork, the loser, the, the the archetype of something. But they don't resent, represent people to you. They represent just things, furniture, yeah, uh, yeah. obstacles. I, I, when I see a big, fat, intimidating guy, I'm like, oh, I don't like him already. Yeah, enough. you see like a like a frat guy or you see a yeah, stereotype yeah, yeah, yeah. or something like that. Yeah. So when you same thing when you go to the club, you don't see bros. You no. see other guys trying to chase women or and they're potential assholes to yeah, you, yeah. etc. And that's going to be reinforced. You're going to have bad social skills and they're going to have bad social skills. So you're going to reinforce that. So the only thing, the only way to solve that is to become socially competent. That is, that is the only way to solve the problem is to be the solution. It's not to think that the problem is wrong. If you can't fix the solution, you're going to become part of the problem. Or I'm sorry, if you can't provide the solution, you are the problem. You will become the problem. You will perpetuate the problem. So just knowing it isn't enough. You have to become competent. Like we always say here. There's no there's no neutral position. <laughs> One way or the other. Yes, if you're not socially competent, you're socially incompetent. You're causing problems. If you're not if you're not helping and becoming the solution, you're causing a problem by default. There's no yeah, neutral. My, my default is causing problems. Yes, yeah. the same <laughs> with Zyger. I mean, Zyger, <laughs> by maybe by comparison, is, might be causing like ten problems less than you, but he's still essentially a problem. Hmm. Like, see, his, his is not as apparent. Mine is yeah, as apparent. but it just depends on your amount of dysfunction. I mean, like I said, there's degrees of dysfunction, but still, ultimately, it falls into the category of dysfunction. So it's just as bad. It's just that it's harder to see because it seems like, oh, Bogler's worse than Z- than Zyger. Zyger's more functional in your view. But really he's not. He's just as – he's he's still in the dysfunction category, just less dysfunctional. But ultimately if you're in dysfunction category, it doesn't matter what, what part of the dysfunction category you're in. It's all dysfunctional. It's all contributing. All on a happy family. Yes, it's all contributing to the, to the chaos. <laughs> Social chaos. The Social chaos. So you need to influence us to be less incompetent. <laughs> Hence, Manhood Academy. Hence, now you understand why you're a student here. Uh, now I get it. <laughs> yes. Eventually, as your view matures, you'll start realizing the responsibilities on your shoulders to influence the people. It's not like an option. Like right now as a student, you're like, well, I have the option of influencing people. Or they, I can let them influence me or I can just kind of do nothing and yeah. nothing will happen. Eventually, as your view matures, you realize either I am the pro- I will remain the problem or I'm going to – the fix solution. these. I'm gonna fix these guys around here and be the solution. Either yeah. I be the problem or the solution. Right now, I'm the right. problem. There you go. So the mature view is that I am now fixing it right now. I am. I'm doing things to shape the people. Just like when the coworker was, you know, messing with you in your EM report, yeah. and you, you handle it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was nice. Good job, Boggles, on that one. Thank you. And uh, I was impressed. Uh, thanks. That was, that was another one where I failed. I didn't well, here's the thing. If that guy's an enemy to you, he's a prop still. In your mind, you defeated him. Like you, you, uh, you shut him down and got your expectation met. But ultimately, when you have the mature view, it's like that guy's a problem and he's going to cause you problems in the social environment. So you have to fix him. It's your responsibility now to make him not a fuck up. Yeah, yeah. It's just like, look, if I had you at the academy, right? Yeah. Well, I could just collect – let's say you're a paying student. I just collect the $10 from you every month and I kind of get something from you. So I go, well, this guy's a stranger, but I'm getting something from him. Shit. So good enough. But eventually you're going to affect me. You're going to affect the other students at the academy. So I got to go, well, this guy's a fuck up, so I have to fix him. It's my responsibility to fix him, not to just let him linger here and me to not do anything passively. Mm-hmm. So there's students here definitely who I don't have a relationship with, but that's my problem. To That's my responsibility to provoke them. They become my problem. They're like my burden now. So like Trees and X, he's like a guy who's like reads, writes terrible entries and uh, has no relationship with any of the students. So I can't yeah, just leave him ever, like that. Don't we ever Skype with him? We haven't. That's why I want to get him on Skype. But the point yeah. is I have to now form a relationship. So – I'm going to be antagonistic to him to do that. Like I'm going to start getting on his posts 
I'm not going to be just be complacent and just say, oh, good post. Even though it didn't do anything and I don't have a relationship, I don't care about reading his posts. I have yeah, to bring him in. Post. Yes, I have to bring him into the relationship. I have to show him how to have it. Mm -hmm. So I have a question that, I mean, since I've come, like the default is for other people to irritate me. Like, I know you probably don't think that way. Like, The default is to people to irritate you? People, people are irritating to me. Well, the default is you are irritating to mm -hmm. people, number one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that solves the problem right there. You are the irritation. If you were non-irritating, if you were a pleasant person to be around, if you were giving people incentive to want to be around you, they would not be irritating by you to you. Hmm, so, okay, so I, yeah, either I be the solution or the problem. Okay. Exactly my point. Either you're the solution or the problem. So then there is the issue of you being the irritant. So once you solve you being the irritant, then other people will val validly or uh, will be a valid irritant to you. So now you have to start adjusting their behavior. Just like your coworker, first step is saying, "Don't do that." Yeah. Saying that's you're a fucking idiot. Yeah. Don't do that. What's the next step? Hey, uh, let me like, convey my experience and try to form a relationship. Yeah, do this instead of saying just don't do that. You don't go, don't do that. It's just like telling a smoker, "Hey, smoker, don't smoke." Yeah. That does nothing. Even if he doesn't smoke around you, he's gonna go and smoke around somebody else. That doesn't solve any problem. You gotta go, smoker, don't smoke, and also do this instead. Have a relationship with me. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I think, uh, I don't know, me, like, uh, some of the students and me, like, we get caught up, like, oh, we got the expectation met, that's all. That it yeah, is. that's my point. That's just the beginning. You guys are so adamant about, like, um, just getting the expectation. Yeah. Like, I said no to this person. Yeah, yeah, oh, I got it. But, again, you got to go for That's That's when you start caring about incentive. It's just like telling a girl, look, a girl was a bitch to me, and I said no to her, uh -huh. and now she, and now I, I dealt with a bitch. But I go, uh -huh. well, are you in a relationship with her? Are you fucking her? Are you having good times with her? Are you having a relation? You know, uh, are you having an intimate Time, enjoyable time spending time together? No, you just told her fuck off. Okay. So you didn't give her any incentive. Really get too far. Right, and you didn't. The EM right now, that is the focus. Get your expectation met. Whether you build the relationship or not is not a focus. Well, it's it's kind of like we have to have both sides. We have it's it's hard to emphasize both sides because on one hand, guys have so much trouble saying no. It's yeah, such a yeah. foreign concept, and it's so it's so easy, so much easier to give somebody a pleasurable experience, like just to give them a free gift or say something nice to them when they're not meeting your expectations. So it's almost like we kind of err on the side of saying no first. And once they do that, then we start saying, okay, now. Anyway, anyone who wants to have relationships anyway, so if they're actually doing what they want to do, they, they should, uh, it should. Well, you need to train both because they don't know. It doesn't, it's not natural because people don't naturally know how to give you incentive because yeah, it I takes don't. effort. You don't naturally know how to talk to me, Zyga. Yeah. It takes effort to talk to me. You don't just, right. you don't just go, oh, I need a relationship with you. So I'm just going to start talking. What do you talk about? Yeah. Yeah, because. Yeah, it's also well, like it's what I mean is that you know, as a student evolves, he, he should uh, it should become natural in the sense that that's what he that's what people want. So yeah, but that's not na it that doesn't become training. natural. You already have your needs, aren't training. you? Are you naturally hungry? Do you become hungry, or are you just naturally <laughs> hungry? I guess I'm naturally hungry. Yeah, so your your point is irrelevant. Whether you eat, whether you want to eat or not, it's already there. People already want to socialize. You don't naturally become social. It's just saying you naturally have a need, but addressing the need is what you're issue is right now it's not having the need everybody has a need to socialize right now so everybody wants to socialize that's that's irrelevant it's getting the need met so what you're working on now is learning how to use the knife and fork learning how to cook the meal learning how to get it into your mouth learning how to chew not the fact that you're hungry everybody's already hungry right um i feel like there should be quite emphasis on building the relationships or a section because like i don't know how great like we're really building relationships even on the side like well, that is the expression part. That's really the part where you go, here, here's the sharing part. That's that's the whole emphasis of the expression section. The, yeah. the expectation management really goes towards that, but a lot of people just by design are starting to post the, you know, hey, this guy was an asshole or this chick yeah. is a bitch and I said no to her finally. Yeah. I, I put my foot down. But through that, we have to have the incentive section, which is why we have the expression section. The, the, the expression section isn't supposed to be the say no part. It's all about giving me the incentive to want to get in a relationship with you. Yeah, I understand. Uh, but what I, I'm saying is, like, there should be a place where we're seeing how is my, like, say, is my relationship with Zyger improving or is it going to shit? Like, how, like, like we should have, like, a measure on the side. I don't know, like... A measuring stick? <laughs> like, I, isn't the measuring stick that he wants to talk to you? Like, no, like, seeing if people are building relationship with other people or is just... It's not... Have heart meters for each student. Yeah, heart meters. I don't know. Like, what would you suggest? I don't know. Like, relationship section. Like, are people building relationship? Are students building relationship on this? Why don't you make a post... And then we can talk about it because I don't, I don't, I don't like, think you fully it's fleshed a it out. Concept in my mind, I don't even like you know how I'll work it out. But yeah, I'll make a post. Like I feel the relationships need to be emphasized at least starting. 
like a test project, like are like are me and guys, is my relationship growing strong? Are we doing things? Am I just pissing him off, or is my relationship getting better? You know, are me and that by four? Are our students able to build relationships with us? How is it going? Either through their posts or by calling, like. So I, I think you're. I think I think you're making a valid point. Hold on, hold on. I th- I think you're making a valid point. I think we've. I think our emphasis in the ebook is kind of the theory point of the way to do it. But yeah. yours is yours is more the practical point of okay, what are you doing? Like yeah. what practical steps are you taking? Right now, I don't think I'm building solid relationships. Here's what here's what I think that goes towards. I think that goes towards the schedule, and that's that's really like um, that's kind of like one of the practical steps we had was building a schedule. Was kind of like okay, well, what are you doing social wise? Yeah. Because now you're accountable to actually doing something. Exactly. I think I think there, that that's so important for me. practically like just making a schedule and putting social activity in it. And right. Forcing myself to do it. So, I, really so maybe step. this is another step in that is to have like some kind of social accountability for the relationship part. Yeah. Like yeah. how are, uh, will we have like I don't know how you do it accountability for a relationship, but because um, they're very organic in nature. Well, I mean, are basically I'm trying, I don't know. It's idea in my head. Like our our students building relationships. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. So there's. I would say along that lines, something something practical would be like a bro day where you're forced to take the lead and you know and do something like that. So I think it would be harder to have a litmus test to go, how's your relationship with so and so? I think it would be much easier to go to start something like a project where you're going, well, I'm going to Skype with X amount of people on a scheduled time, or I'm going to do. It's basically essentially a bro day where you're forced to take responsibility for a group of people or a group of bros and show them a good time. So you're giving them incentive yeah. to have a relationship with you. I want. They also should be an indication of if the relationship is going in a proper direction or not. If the relationship is going in the proper direction, well, wouldn't it be okay? Let's say I put you in a bro day, right? And yeah. you and you had a bad bad relationship. Yeah. Wouldn't that? Wouldn't the litmus test be like if the the bros are writing about it and? Oh yeah, know, yeah. I think they should be feedback. People should write about it and stuff. So yeah, that but won't sense. that be the litmus test with the way people write about it? Oh yeah, yeah, that will. I mean, I didn't think about like the fact, like about the part where people are writing about it. If they are, that makes sense. Yeah, I guess because like things so like you weren't thinking about heart meter. Well, here's what I think about when I think about like a heart meter like that. I think about Doctor Chud, mm-hmm. and I think about Trees and X who have like no concept, the, the no relationship concept with the students. Like I write things to on his posts, and he doesn't respond back, or he responds back kind of like in an indirect way, where he just writes a topic but doesn't directly respond back to me. Mm-hmm. So there's no relationship, and yeah. there's no acknowledgement that I don't even care about his posts. It's like yeah. he's posting in spite of me saying anything about his posts. So I think yeah, in that sense, they're. That, or at least, like some students forming modern relationships, and then people. I, I think you should focus your post at the problem students, like like a student like Zyger who's building more relationship, or like Boke with his other students is is harder to measure than versus like somebody like Doctor Chud who is writing a lot of posts. He has a large volume of posts, but no relationship with a lot of people uh, on, on the forum. I mean, so I think that'd be a perfect example of like a student who is doing something but spinning his wheels and not getting anywhere. Uh, I mean, I still have trouble building a proper relationship. Yeah, but that's – okay, so you, for instance, you are a Dr. Chud, but I would say not not really because you facilitate more relationships on the forum. Like you I have more do, Skype calls with people. at the people. same time, the relationships, they're not that great. You know what I mean? Yeah, so okay, so then what do you suggest what do you practically? Pardon? What do you suggest what do you practically? Mean not that great? Like he's not having a – I don't think my relationship with you is that good. With me? Yeah. Yeah, we've had some little yeah. fights. So ideally, I want to have a good relationship with you. Okay, so I, I agree. So practically speaking, you would be an example of a Dr. Chud in another sense where like you ha- – instead of Dr. Chud being oblivious to relationships, you're at least conscious of them, but you're just having bad relationships. So, yes, yes. Okay, so for both cases, what would be – that would be a good thing, a way to brainstorm like a, a bro days or some kind of practical thing where you could go, okay, well, it's not going in the direction I want. Mm-hmm. How do I address it? I think that's a, I think that's a great post to uh, talk about. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll start and people can uh, chime in. That would actually go in section three. That would be a good thing to put in section three of the ebook. Okay. Because I think we have ebook examples. We have individual examples of like how to run a social interaction, but we don't really have a sense of like how to build towards. Like yeah, we, to we in people. a general way we do, but not in a specific yeah. way. I want to have something more geared towards like the schedule thing where we can actually do something. The guys yeah, can do something yeah. to kind of, uh, I don't know. Building a relationship where, yeah, I start, I call uh, like three, like two guys, and then they write about it or something, and then they, you can see how the relationship either is being built or there's problems, how they're being resolved. And this, all of these, this evolution is going to be set in stone on the forum. So people yeah, it's going to be future generations will see, oh, that's how <laughs> that is how the, 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 the became the best friends. Exactly. Of the <laughs> they became buddies at this point. This yeah. is this is the hard part because I don't I don't think there's really any quantifiable way to do that other than I think there is there's a thing where really there's a feedback because it's really comes in the feedback. Like if the guy wants to hang out with you, if you're having exactly. a good time with this person, if they want to do more things with you socially versus not do that. I think the only really the only countable part is that you go. Like even if you had a bro day, let's say we had an actual activity, like you're going to socialize three times a week. Mm-hmm. Even if you were still socializing, if you're doing things the wrong way, mm-hmm. the, the amount of socializing isn't going to matter. Yeah. 
it's that you fix the way you socialize that matters. Yeah, if I'm able to give him enough incentive. Right. To, his feedback will tell him, like, ah, yeah, I was able to... Yeah, but I, people give you feedback all the time. They go, Bob, they're being a dick, and you're not giving this guy incentive to meet your expectations, but that's not making you change your behavior. Uh, uh. Well, I mean, but this is going to be, like, a, say I pick two students, and it's going to be, like, a very concrete thing. I mean, right now, say, 20, 10 different people, they're giving different feedback at different times. So it, that makes me think momentarily, but this day, I'm like, okay, I'm going to concretely try to build a relationship with these two students, or whatever. Okay, I, I'll tell you what. Let's let's see how it plays out. Why don't you post yeah. about it, and we'll brainstorm about it, and see okay. what we can come up with? Because I think okay. this is an interesting topic to go. Yeah, over. it is. Yeah, yeah. It's a, I think it's a, a good step forward for the side in general. Yeah, yeah. Because let me think that we're not already addressing. Exactly. Let me see if I can even. You know what we need? Mind. You know what we need though? We actually need a bro day. I, we need that bro days post. We do. We do. <laughs> At least even if it's a Skype bro day, and and also see if I can even build one successful relationship with here's, a fellow student on the side. Here's site. what we should facilitate with the bro days. You should actually make this post. I don't know. I, I would actually trust Zyger to make it because yeah, you haven't made it. it. Zyger. I'm a lazy guy. We need a, You <laughs> fucking hassle. That's exactly why. Yeah. You just immediately go with the I'm a lazy guy excuse. Zyger. Uh, explain to me what it is. Okay. We used to have this post of with the very first students where it was called bro days. And what it was essentially was because the students were lived around each other, the ones that did, they met up like, let's say we had three or four students, right? Yeah. And they would all meet together like on a Saturday. And okay. it was a job of, they're going to rotate every week at weekend. And it was the job of one student, whoever was the leader that, that week was to pick, was to plan the day out for them. So like, if you're going to come over, I'd say, okay, we're going to cook you breakfast or I'm going to make breakfast for us. Or we're going to go to some breakfast place to eat. We're going to do this activity, this activity. So it's his job to arrange everything. Like yeah, one guy has to leave. It's trans- like, transportation. Like if you were on a date, you would be Yeah, late. pretty much you're on a date. So you're figuring out where to go, what to do for the yeah. entire day and for four people, not just yourself. Oh, well, that's awesome. Yeah. that So that forced you to kind of like learn how to lead. Like if problems are obviously going to come up and they obviously yeah. – and they did. And then you got to write about them, how you manage them, et cetera. So like if somebody – for instance, we had immediately had like um, people saying show up at 10. And people showed up at like 12, right? So they <laughs> they fucked up. So you have a guy who fucked up, and then the other guy has to learn how to manage that, right? How do you yeah. deal with somebody who's not who's yeah. not meeting your expectation? So those are all issues that come up like a, just a regular – like that will come up with anybody. Getting people to show up on time, that's a major expectation. So how do you manage that? Do you just go without him? Do you do – so that's all part of it, and that's going to teach you how to do that. So bro days – that was physically meeting, and so I think so, I think some students can do that because they're in the s- same area, which is good. So they should take turns, like every weekend, pl- one student is in charge of planning something out, and the other students right. had to rate how like how they how the other student did, how the leader did at that time. Was it fun? Did they have a good time? Enjoyable, etc. So they kind of rate the experience. So I think we should have those, and also because we have like enough students, we can have like a Skype day or whatever where one person's in charge of leading it. So it's not just like I go. The problem with the social interactions here with Skype is that you guys go, okay, I want to talk to everybody, and everybody wants to meet up on Skype, and so you all meet up, but you have nothing to do because exactly. nobody's leading it. I mean, Skype activities. Like exactly. Well, so that's that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Somebody has to be the leader. It's the reason why things are fun when I come on and we have a Skype call because I want to accomplish something. I want to do something. So everybody's like looking forward to that. Everybody knows yeah. there's there's not going to be like a, a ten hour silence where everybody goes. What do we do next? What do yeah, we, do well, next? we know you're always uh, reliable to fill it with a lecture. So. <laughs> well, you know that I'm going in a direction. Yes. That's what makes it enjoyable. You always know, like, you're the date and you go, there's never been this awkward pause where there's this nerdy guy and he's, uh, uh, well, what do we do on the date? I don't, I don't know what to do. What do you want to do? Right? Girls hate that when guys are like, I don't know, what, wherever you want to go is fine. Wherever you want to eat is fine. I don't care. What do you want to do? They don't want that responsibility. They're not built for that. But guys are affected the same way. If there's, like, ten guys and there's no leader and they're all just twiddling their thumbs, they're not going to have a good time. So I think you need to start shaping the Skype calls too. Yeah, yeah. So well, I th- actually once or twice, like, see, I'm incons- inconsistent. Like, I was able to, like, I suggested people like do uh, play the typewriter game online, and all four or five of us were in the, in the well, Skype. Well, let me tell you, it's not just you. Even I'm experiencing it because I look at, I go like this. I go, you guys need to chat in the chat room. So I put the ten sentence minimum in there, right? <laughs> Thinking, hey, everybody's gonna type at least ten sentences. But even that. It's not enough. There has to be a, a guy actively modeling that because yeah. 10 sentences is daunting for a guy who <laughs> can't type one sentence. So I realized so, I, it's, I can't just go type 10 sentences. I have to go, okay, I'm going to start typing. And then I started realizing that, and then I go, well, fuck it. I got to type. It doesn't matter. I'm going to always type if I'm in there. Now, on one hand, I don't want to monopolize the conversation and have everybody go, oh, I hope Plum shows up so we have fun. But on the other hand, everybody's such a social retard that I have to take the lead until people get going, and then I can just leave the conversation. Yeah. So I need to perpetuate it. So it's going to take my effort. The same by the same. So I have to give it direction. I have to become responsible for the conversation I want to happen in the chat room. Exactly my point. So that's why you have to make the post instead of me going. Well, I hope Bogner makes it. I can't rely on that anymore. I have to make it happen. So I had to go. 
who's going to do it? Zyger's going to do it. So you got to make the post that goes bro days explaining like if you're – you, you got to do two things. You got to go – if people are local – you got to explain it first of all, the concept, just like we talked about it. They can even, You can have them listen to this podcast. That would be great. Then the second part of that is the, the bros that are local should get together like each weekend if possible and have them switch off on like the guy – the bro who's in charge plans the activity for that week for those bros. And then they come back and rate it, and then they switch off. And the other thing uh, is the Skype call where you guys can all meet together, doesn't matter where you are, and try and figure out time zones that are convenient for people. Like if you guys have to break it off because I know some people are the opposite end of the world, yeah, yeah. literally, so you might have to break it off into two groups. But if possible, I'd like to have as big a group as possible yeah. of you guys. And then one guy each week – and don't do this like – you don't have to do it every day, but I'd say like once a week you guys have like a conference or two conferences or three conferences, and then one person's in charge. And they have to plan what goes on, what's being discussed. Like they have to have topics on hand and ready to go. So it's going to require their effort to keep it going and to moderate. They're going to have to go, look, stop talking. We're going to talk about this, you guys. So they have to direct the conversation. And then there has to be – Exactly. It's just, it's like a Toastmasters. speeches turn by turn and it's directed. Exactly. So when it's your turn, you could see – like you could say, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. So some guy might have a free-for-all. Some guy might have a more directed thing. Yeah. And then you're going to see the yeah. feedback on that. Like when it was a more chaotic situation, did you have a good time? Or when this guy was like super micromanaging everybody, did you have a good time? You're going to see what's going to work and what's not going to work based on the feedback. Already leading people for half an hour on a Skype call seems like a daunting task. Well. How do I talk about for half hour or, you know, or what do I have? I could lead – I've been leading people for hours on end every Skype, so every Skype conversation teachers. with you. Yeah, but that's – what's the difference between me and you? Perspective. Because, bro, you're teaching us. If you didn't teach us, yeah, but what's the difference you. between me and you? You have direction. No. Well, what's the difference between me and you? Isn't that much of a big deal? It's, it seems more. Yeah. The only person. difference between me and Bogler is I, Bogler, me can both do it. It's just that you have experience. Exactly. I say I can do it, and I'm going to do it right now. And Bogler's like, well, I don't know if I could do it. I don't know if how to work out when yeah. he actually has the capacity to do it. So it's really perspective. That's the only difference. Yeah, you just need to dive in and you can, anyone can do That's it. That's my point. Bogler's a fag. He doesn't realize that he can do it. He's always like, oh, what if it doesn't work? Oh, yeah. I don't know how to do it. Just yeah. do it. Just start doing it. Like, um, for instance, I'm like, well, we're going to have a 10-minute podcast about Zyger's zombie situation. Yeah. Now it's like <laughs> one hour and 14 minutes later, we're talking about bro days. I'm just doing it. I'm just saying what needs to be said, and then we're do- when we're done, when we're done. So your goal is you for your post you might have a goal of like thirty I don't know what's the practical for you guys an hour or half hour whatever you guys decide. Well, start off half an hour and see how guys are able and then they can definitely. Well, Zyger's writing the post, so he's gonna figure out what's the most ideal time. You guys can take a poll if you want and say, hey, it should be an hour. I I would suggest um, an hour to a half hour, and then see how it works out. Like push yourselves an hour, and then if it doesn't work out, cut it down to half hour and say this is this is what I'm trying to do, and this is these are the topics we're gonna have to do. You know, so oh, man. half hour would just zoom by. And well, like a depends on who's in charge. Yeah. <laughs> See, basically, it's like, I guess, like three friends hanging out. I mean, you should be able to hang out for a half hour. Yeah, hour. but the difference is, if we're hanging out and something's lagging, I'm going to come forward and go, look, this is the way it has to go because I'm not going to yeah. waste my time. Whereas this is more like, it's assigned. I can't over, I can't supersede the guy in charge. Yeah, okay. That's the difference. Mm-hmm. So if it's fucked, it's going to be fucked because the guy in charge is fucked. Okay. And then the review is going to come in and exactly. you're realize it. The review is going to come in bad, and it's going to tell him what he needs to be doing. He's not leading here. He's making it chaotic. He's not. Yeah. He's not keeping good order here. He's not presenting the topics. He's not leading in the topics. He's not initiating, etc. Okay. And uh, these uh, reports are going to be uh, posted in the uh, practical social socialization section or a bro day section. I think it would be um, in the EM section, maybe a bro day thread. Yeah. Bro, okay. I think this would be awesome. I'm actually looking forward to seeing this. I think so, too. Because bro days was rad when we had bro days the first time. That was fucking yeah. rad. Yeah, I was like, I want to go on these things. Yeah. But then I remember, like, Bago was in charge that day. Yeah. I was like, fuck. Like, like, nah, never, mind. never mind. And today marks the beginning of a new bro day era. Yeah, it's a new bro day era right now. Yeah. I'm we're, excited. We're, we're taking it yeah, to the forum now. We're taking it to the next level. I wish I was a loser nerd so I could join bro days. <laughs> yes, because I know, yeah, Plum can't join the Skype. This club. is a cool thing because I can't join in on bro days. Otherwise, it defeats the point. Yeah. <laughs> you could, like, get a secret identity. I like, could. Get hey, hey, guys. Uh, uh, I heard um, you guys are uh, doing stuff online i want to join the skype is that cool all right bravo oscar oscar uh yeah yeah actually yeah having this as a program is good because i mean we've had skype conferences but eventually they all broke off eventually we're like yeah it's too much headache yes no direction is exactly why things don't work out why things dissipate if you have direction they go someplace if you don't they don't 
I mean, we have bursts of ideas. Okay, let's do shadow boxing. And then, that's okay, fucking okay. rad. See, that's what would be one of my activities. I'd be like, look, we're doing 10 minutes of cardio or workout. I would do like exactly. fucking shadow box. I like it. I like it. I, aerobics. Yeah, let's all do sit ups, crunches. I like it. Yeah. So I think for the first two, maybe guys should, cause see, it's the same problem. Like when you're writing the post, the danger is giving options to retards. Uh, like you're going to say 30 minutes to do whatever you want, uh, which a retard is not going to be able to do anything. Yeah. So you're going to have to give like definite suggestions, Zyger. And yeah, not, maybe not even suggestions. Sense. You might even just tell them like, look, for here's a here's a list of possible things to start out. If you're a newbie, pick from this list. Yes, Definitely yes, pick from this yes, list. Yes. So I would say like, I would break it up and and, not, and just to break up their boundary of what they think yes. they can do. Because as a new guy, they won't even know what to do. So you'll go, look, if you're a new guy, you want to pick one from this physical topic. So one is shadow boxing. You yes. have an option of leading shadow boxing for five minutes where you just create a workout, aerobic yeah. workout for five or ten minutes. The other thing for ten minutes, be definite. Right. Don't give the or. Stay away from the ors or you shoulds. Just say do this, okay? Um, Ten minutes of talking of, about topics that have to do with X, Y, and Z and give them yeah. some definite topics. And then um, – Or practice typing games. I don't know. Uh, so you're going to have to come up with definite things basically yeah. is what I'm saying. I'll, I'll, I'll you'll you'll ha- say, say this. Like if you're an experienced guy, you may create your own curriculum. But if you're a new guy and you know what the fuck you're doing, pick yeah. from this list. Yes. Make sure they're definite things you're doing. So everybody, even from the newest guy to the most advanced guy, knows, knows exactly what they're doing. They're not going to be like, exactly. oh, I don't know, blah, 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 right? Yes. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're realizing how, how retarded students are and you're able to cater them yes. to the most. And here's students. what we should do is they, and they might have to submit. Maybe they should submit to me in secret ballot, like their, yeah. just their, their list of what they're going to do. Just like yeah. PM me the list so I can approve it. Yes. You can veto anything. Yeah, I think that's what we did anyway on the original yeah, Bro Days. Yeah, that's what we did. I forgot about that. Yeah, they were supposed to submit to me what they're going to do, their itinerary, and I just approved it or okay yeah, it, uh, and then they just did it. Should make it better. Yeah. So no, they, here's what they should see. do. I, I, I trust Zyger. You see. Yeah, because you're a fucking lazy-ass guy making excuses. You should be taking notes right now. Um, I'm you should. Notes. That's what Zimbago should be doing. Zyger, you should um, have them post – for the guy that's upcoming, have them post their itinerary just so oh, I can no. approve it. Well, does he post it on the phone or just submits it in a private message? In the post. No, in the uh, in the bro post. Because I think that's how we did it last time, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. And you can make some changes. Like yeah. And then like so that. other people can see what they're doing and kind of yeah. get suggestions from that. Yeah. So post up your uh, post, Zyger. And then uh, Boggs, go over it since you have the experience and add anything that you think is uh, going to make it more beneficial. Okay, sure. Sweet. Oh, this is going to be awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is, yeah, this is definitely the direction. It's going to be sick. Mm-hmm. See, Boggler Eve is an initiator now. He sees the problem. He's like, how do I how do I get the problem? To go away. How do I? How do I fix the problem? How do I meet my need? Yes. That's becoming socially competent. When you basically, you don't even have to have the ability, but you go look. Either this guy can do it, or I can do it, and I yeah. need to find the people that can do it. That is socially competent. Yes, I love finding people who can do it. <laughs> Fucking guy. That's Bog's style. Bog's style is manager style. <laughs> Bog's style is outsourcing to India. Yeah. Outsourcing style. Outsourcing Sweet. Style. All right, I gotta get out of here. Oh, I thought it was at 130, but, you know, that's just my OCD speaking. 120 can work, too. Get on it. Break. All right. Great podcast. Thank you, guys.